Oscillating mass graph, elastic potential energy. A 0.25 kilogram mass is attached to a horizontal spring which undergoes simple harmonic motion. The graph of EPE over here as a function of position is shown. The total energy of the oscillating system is two millijoules. Now first thing, be very careful. We're not using SI units here. Okay, we're using centimeters and millijoules. Draw the graph of total energy as a function of position. Draw the graph of kinetic energy as a function of position. What is the maximum displacement of the oscillating mass? And what is the spring constant? Some more questions. What is the potential energy at the position of 1.5 centimeters? What is the kinetic energy at that position? Find the location of the oscillating mass when its potential energy is 1.5 millijoules. And what is the period of the oscillations? Draw the graph of total energy as a function of position. Look at this here. Total energy of the oscillating system is 2 millijoules. And we're not told that there's any friction, so that total energy will stay the same every point in the movement of this uh, oscillating mass. So we draw a horizontal line at 2 millijoules, and we don't go all the way to the end or all the way to the right of the graph, we have to stop here, 2 centimeters and minus 2 centimeters, because that's as much as this mass will be oscillating between, between the uh, negative 2 centimeter point and a 2 centimeter point. Draw the graph of kinetic energy as a function of position. The graph of kinetic energy will be the opposite because the kinetic energy is the total energy minus the elastic potential energy. So let's just plot a couple points to, to sort of prove this. At this point here, you have a maximum EPE and there's no room for kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is down here at zero. Same at the other side. That's actually where the mass stops momentarily. So it has zero kinetic energy. In the middle, we have no potential energy. So since energy is conserved, it is all kinetic. And then drawing the curve, you just have to know that that's how you do it. I mean, you can show the equations, but this was in the uh, presentation. So just know that it's a curve. And what's really cool about this, you add those two curves together and you get a straight line. So let's just take a second to show one of the points and you can do a few more. It's pretty cool. So let's see. Let's go right at this point here. Here's your, on the green, that's your kinetic energy. Now, what's the value of your potential energy at that point? Well, I'll draw a little line up here. Potential energy is this, and it comes all the way down. If you were to move that up, take this piece here, put it on top of the kinetic energy, it lands up there. So if I were to pick these two points, okay, here's kinetic energy. Nope, that's elastic potential energy right here. Kinetic energy is up here. So let's take this vector, well, it's not a vector, but that line, put it up here because we add it to the kinetic energy, and look, you're on the straight line again. I just find it neat how two curves like that, you add it together piece by piece, and you get a horizontal straight line. What is the maximum displacement of the oscillating mass? You look at the graph, and the graph does not go past two centimeters. So that tells you that since the kinetic energy is zero, and the elastic potential energy is a maximum, you're at the end of the limits there of your oscillating mass. So the maximum displacement occurs when all of the energy is in the form of EPE and no energy is in the form of KE. It occurs at two centimeters and minus two centimeters, but normally we just state the positive value. What is the spring constant? To solve for the spring constant, use the EPE equation. EPE is one half KX squared. You need to pick a point on the graph where both EPE and X are non-zero, so we have something to substitute. So the neatest point would be right here, where you have two centimeters for X and EPE is two millijoules. Any other point would work either on the EPE or KE curve, but it's a little harder to find an exact point. So rearrange the EPE equation, and we want to solve for K. So you multiply both sides by two over x squared. That clears everybody on the right side, except for k, and then it puts a two over x squared next to the EPE. 
plug in the numbers and be sure to convert centimeters to meters and millijoules to joules. So to go from millijoules to joules, move the decimal place three to the left and centimeters to meters, move the decimal place two to the left. So here they are, because you have to use joules and meters for the equation so we can get newtons and meters in the answer. So K will be 10 newtons per meter. What is the potential energy at the position of 1.5 centimeters? Well, we can estimate it by reading off the graph. We go up till we hit the EPE curve and then over to the energy. And it looks like it's about 1.1 millijoules. But if we want it exact, we use the EPE equation. Right? We, found, we found the value of K on the last slide, so input that in, and here's your X, and make sure you use it in meters. Do the calculation, and you get EPE is 1.125 millijoules. The values are close, but keep in mind there's usually some error in reading points along a graph. What is the kinetic energy at the point 1.5 centimeters? Well, again, you can just read it off the graph. Here's 1.5 centimeters. You go up to the kinetic energy curve, go over here, and it looks like about 0.9 millijoules. Or use this. We already found the EPE. Now we know the kinetic energy is going to be the total energy minus the EPE. So we have 2 millijoules minus the 1.125 millijoules that we calculated, and the kinetic energy is 0.875 millijoules. And that's pretty close to the point 0.9. Now we're going to go backwards. We want to find the location of the oscillating mass when its potential energy is 1.5 millijoules. So graphically, here's 1.5. Go over until you hit the EPE curve. Go on down. And it looks like it's about 1.75 centimeters. But we can do it mathematically because we have the value for K. Here's the EPE, solve that equation for X, and you do that by multiplying both sides by two over K, and that will give you X squared, and then you have to take the square root. We did a bunch of algebra steps in one here. So X is the square root of two EPE over K. Put in our numbers, converting millijoules to joules, and you get 0.0173 meters, or move the decimal two to the right, and you get 1.73 centimeters. And that's pretty close to what we estimated using the graph. What is the period of oscillations? Finally, a more simple question here. As long as you have the formula, which is 2 pi times the square root of m over k, plug in our mass, which we have in kilograms, plug in the value of spring constant we found, and the period is 0.993 seconds.